Hello and welcome to a um, one of our senior leaders briefing for the uh, Sir John Brunner Foundation. I'm going to go through um, two two parts to it really. One's the horizon scanning, so looking at the uh, potential changes coming over the horizon that we need to plan for and be ready for. And then um, there's uh, three things in particular looking at the here and now, or the right here, right now, as it as it says on the screen there. So, in terms of that horizon scanning thing, I thought it'd be useful just to to summarise really briefly some of the uh, education announcements that were made at the uh, political party conferences that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. So starting with the Conservative Party conference, there were kind of three main announcements. Um, the first one around the advanced British standard, so um, potential in the future, I think in, in 10 years, um, uh, changes to how, how students uh, are assessed and taught um, in in level three, so in their, their post-16 pathways, and uh, the removal of A-levels, the removal of BTECs, and the introduction of the advanced British standard. Now, the, the thinking behind that is that uh, uh, internationally we do narrow our curriculum sooner than our international colleagues, and we also have less teaching time than our uh, international colleagues or, or the students in, in schools abroad. So it's looking at, looking at change in that. Now, um, it's, it's a very high level announcement at the moment, so there's not much detail. Um, so it's kind of a, a watch this space with that one. Uh, mobile phones was also uh, talked about a lot during the uh, Conservative Party conference. Um, a potential ban, uh, non-statutory guidance, but of course, um, if, if that becomes the norm and if Ofsted are expecting not to see phones in schools, it's something we need to consider. And then uh, finally, the um, uh, promise that there will be updated guidance around relationships and sex and health education, in particular trans guidance, which will, will come in useful for us to kind of clarify what we should and shouldn't be doing. Um, in terms of the Labour Party conference, they um, announced a uh, an opportunity mission, which had five parts to it, um, which are on the screen there. I'm just going to focus on one in particular, the, uh, the broader education and the highest standards in schools. So there's kind of three, I think three main sections from that, the uh, the curriculum assessment review. So um, a quote there uh, from that that um, from that paper that says that they want to build on the hard work and skills of thousands of subject specialist teachers who have developed a rich knowledge curriculum. So kind of reassuring that it's not kind of kicking everything out that we've done over the last uh, over the last uh, 10, 10 years, or the last decade, 13 years, I suppose, it's building on that great work that, that we've certainly done in our schools. It's looking at reforming accountability. So, for example, one, um, one of the included uh, subjects in Progress 8 will have to be a vocational or a creative subject for students at Key Stage 4, that is. Um, and then also looking at supporting school improvement, and in particular, Ofsted there. So replacing that headline grades with new report card, bringing multi-academy tr trusts into the remit of inspection and um, an annual review of safeguarding of health and safety, um, attendance and off-rolling. So that, those are the potential changes coming there. And, and one of the changes just with the curriculum there is that um, all schools, academies and maintained schools will be expected to deliver the national curriculum in full. So that is a, a slight change to where we are at the moment and also a change to what the national curriculum may look like. In terms of the Liberal Democrats, they looked at uh, reforming Ofsted and also annual financial checks as well. Okay, so that's that's coming over the in the future, so something we need to be aware of, planning for, um, and being able to make sure that we stay on top of our game as the, as the game changes. But in terms of right here, right now, so what we're focusing on in the uh, the urgent and immediate, um, and it's very much this comes out of certainly from the uh, the key stage four results which were published yesterday, so on the nineteenth of October, published uh, publicly yesterday, and and there's kind of three things I think that we need to focus on in our schools. Certainly, one of the the main focuses needs to be needs to continue to be supporting our disadvantaged students. Now, our disadvantaged students, uh, the way that they're defined, they are students who are uh, supported by the pupil premium. So we get a little bit of extra funding for those those students and are held accountable for how we spend the, um, that funding and for the outcomes of those students. So those students, as we all know, are those eligible for free school meals now or at any point over the last six years and those students who are looked after or are previously looked after. Now, students who fall within that category as, as disadvantaged or supported by the pupil premium, um, they're a very varied group. 
they may fall into different pro they do fall into different prior attainment groups so there, there there'll be some students who are supported by the pupil premium who are lower prior attainment middle prior attainment or higher prior attainment so they're they're very um, a very um, a varied group with very different challenges and very different needs so it's for us to identify we need to definitely know who are our students who are supported by the pupil premium, who are our disadvantaged students. We need to know who they are. But we also need to think about what does that individual student need to be successful, to improve their outcomes. Um, so do all of our classroom teachers and student facing support staff know who our, who our students are who are supported by the pupil premium? Are they trying to address the individual barriers to learning? And obviously, you can only do that if you know who they are and what the challenges that they are facing. Now on the on the graphic on the screen there now, there are potential barriers to learning for disadvantaged students. Now on those tiles, they might it might be that um, our students, our disadvantaged students, have to overcome some of those challenges, all of them, other challenges not on the screen, or even none of them at all. Um, so they've got to overcome those hurdles and we, it's our job as leaders and as teachers and as um, support staff to support those students to overcome those barriers. So how do we do that? How do we overcome those barriers? Well, there's three things that we need to focus on. That high quality teaching and learning and make sure that that's a consistent experience throughout all of our schools and within all of our schools and within all of our subjects. We need to look at that targeted academic support and intervention and that intervention needs to be in lesson where we see the students most so it's not just about doing a, a revision session after school that's great and it, it adds some value but we will add much more value we will improve the progress of these students by supporting them in the lesson and having them at our forefront of our thinking when we're planning our lessons when we're delivering our lessons and when we're assessing that learning um, so it's what happens in the lesson that counts most of all and then those things that happen outside the lesson excellent that's adding on to those the, those strong foundations um, that have been created in the lesson and there's also that support of non-academic barriers to success so attendance really important we'll come on to that in a minute behavior absence emotional support well-being whatever it is that these students need to help them achieve we need to make sure that we're putting that there for them and we know what works we know that it's a whole school relentless approach. We know that we have to provide these students, and in fact all of our students, with challenging curriculum and with aspirational targets. Those 20 percentile targets, really important. We know who the students are, we know what their targets are, and we know where the gap is. So we know how far behind, um, for example, they are from their target and what are we going to do as teachers to get them to their target. So we need to know all of our students. We need to deliver and adapt our teaching and, our, and, and, the, and their learning. So our teaching and their learning with um, the disadvantaged students at the forefront of our minds. We need to reflect and evaluate, particularly on that year 11 data. So I know the students have, are sitting or have sat their student tracking one exams in the, in the schools. What are we going to do with that data? What does that data tell us? It'll certainly identify the students who are furthest away from their targets, so those students that we need to really focus on. But then what are we actually going to do with that data? Are we going to look at that question level analysis, look at where their gaps in their, their knowledge and the gaps in their skills are, and then how are we going to address those so that by ST2, they're slightly closer to their target, and by their exams, they actually meet or exceed their target, that ambition that we've got for all of our disadvantaged students. Um, and we need to design and implement impactful teacher actions, as we've called them in the past. So what are we doing as a teacher to get that student to their target? What are we going to do? And we know it's in the lesson that's in, important. We know it's targeted support, that intervention inside of lesson, most important, outside secondly. Tangible support, buying shoes, buying um, sports kits, all of those things, really important, keep doing that. And then finally there, that underpins all of these, is that caring and compassionate approach. We need to know what are the barriers to the students' learning, what's stopping them meeting or exceeding their targets, and then doing something about it. And we know what works. And in the past there, so that's right back to 2017, when, cranky, when my hair was uh, much, much, well, not as grey as it is at the moment, when at the County High School left, which we won a pupil premium award because we had that relentless, uh, relentless focus on those disadvantaged students 
and the um, the progress eight was so strong that year that we were, we were invited myself and uh, Julie Brandreth and some students invited down to Parliament to get that award. And it was because of that relentless focus on these students, because they need it and they deserve it. So whatever your role is, how can you ensure that these students, these disadvantaged, these students supported by the Pupil Premium, meet or exceed their target in year seven, eight, nine, ten, and particularly in year, year 11? What are we gonna do to improve their progress, to improve their outcomes from ST1 to ST2, from ST2 to their exams in the summer? What are we gonna do in our lessons to make sure that they learn more and can do more by the end of this term, this year, and their time with us? We know that it's that high quality teaching and learning. It's that targeted academic support and intervention, and it's that support of non-academic barriers, in particular, attendance. Which leads on nicely to the other, the other focus that we've got to very much uh, uh, be thinking about carefully over the next few weeks because we know that nationally students aren't attending school as much as they should and in our schools they're not attending schools as much as we know they need to to make the progress that we know they can make if they turn up, if they're in our lessons and if we're focusing on that in-lesson support for them. So the DfE are, are about to uh, release some more statutory guidance that we need to follow and, and you know, it looks largely sensible guidance and it's over those three three kind of themes there that we need to prevent patterns of absence from developing by promoting good attendance so that positive messaging about how important it is to come into school and making sure that when students come into school they do get that first class experience so they know it's worth getting up out of bed because if they go into school today they're going to learn more and be able to do more we need to intervene as early as the point as possible so we need to make sure that we do spot those patterns and, uh, and be persistent um, working with the families to remove any barriers to attendance. And we need to target that support for those with persistent or severe absenteeism. Now we can only do that if we're looking at the data. And if we're looking at the data in the big picture comparing to other schools, looking carefully at the different groups, what lies beneath that data, so that we can do that prevention, that, that, that intervening and that targeted support really important there that we have a real focus on the next half term um, on attendance or another focus is probably fair to say because we have been looking at that very very carefully and finally in terms of the here and now or the right here right now is a seven up we're calling this so this is a, a focus on um, on our students to make sure that they do get those top grades so really we're looking at those students with higher prior attainment or maybe even some with middle prior attainment that we're really going to push to get those grades sevens eights and nines or get those grades a's and a, a stars or distinction and distinction stars um, at post 16 much more on this to follow so we will be doing a, um, a a conference in the spring term where we're really focusing how do you get the students those top grades in their exams so we'll be looking at that looking at that really carefully in the um, in in the spring term but in certainly uh, in the next half term. Now Sarah, Sarah Jupiter, our Director of um, School Improvement, sent me, sent me a paper um, um, the other day about, uh, about how, how do we look at um, about really kind of pushing that progress of those, those, those higher, higher prior attainment, or like I say, the middle prior attainment, getting those top grades really, so making sure the students get those top grades. Um, and it's a paper called uh, Thinking Matters, Whole School Metacognition Beyond Rose and Shine. Um, and it talks about this. So I'm going to read it out. It says, when considering how we address the progress concerns of high prior attainment students, the image of the airport control tower may be used to represent the student or meta learner. The teacher as the cogn cognitive coach is also an interesting concept. So it says an airport control tower or those who work within it. Um, has a high degree of alertness of what is going on around it with information taken in, processed, and as a result, appropriate and effective resulting action is taken. This is a powerful metaphor for the metacognitive student who likewise is aware of what is going on within their lesson, uh, within their learning environment, how they are take, uh, taking in and processing information, how they are making decisions and organizing their learning and who they expertly select and utilize, um, uh, especially then utilize tools and approaches from their metacognitive toolkit. As a result, they can process information effectively, make informed judgment and react appropriately. They have control and mastery of agents and as agents of their own learning. So they have control and mastery as agents of their own learning. Ideal qualities for problem solving 
whether these being in exam or in real life. So that, that's, how, that's how it's done well, but how do we make sure that high, our high prior attainment students are in this high octane on environment? And if we revisit uh, Andrew Bowden's uh, Festival of Education presentation, the answers are in there. It is about amplifying the signal. What are we trying to teach? How are we gonna teach it? Focusing on that and only that, reducing the noise. It is about having the teacher as the expert. The I do, the we do, still teacher led, and the you do, only when the student is ready. It is about that thinking, that silent working, thinking hard, working hard, that challenge. When the students are in the pit, how do they get out of it? And it is about that sequencing. What are we teaching them and when? and in what order, and in which activities, and is it the most impactful way possible? So lots more to come about the, that, that seven up idea and, the, and getting those real top grades in the exams um, uh, over the next half term and, and uh, certainly into the spring term. Now, uh, so in summary, we've got those potential change in political landscape. It's vital we support those students, those disadvantaged students with that high quality teaching and learning, targeted academic support, and support of non-academic barriers. Attendance certainly does matter, and that seven up as we just discussed. So I hope you have a great half term when it arrives. I know some of you were um, on next week, and some of you are the following week. So I hope you have a great, relaxing half term, and then when we come back after half term, we we attack the the right here, right now, supporting those disadvantaged students. Attendance matters, and going for those real top grades of our seven up idea. Excellent. Thank you very much. Goodbye.